Hello, everyone, and welcome to another ASMR patch notes with Yuli. Today, we're going to take a look at the League of Legends patch. Which is the first of two worlds focused patches with lots and lots of champion changes, item and rune adjustments, and the new pentakill skin line. The first champion to receive a change is Aphelius, who has been appearing more than pro play because of his consistent early game. He's getting his base AD nerfed to make it harder for him to get his first item and to scale. Ash's early game was too oppressive and her W, Polly, is receiving a cooldown increase in the early stages of the game. Camille is too safe in lane for the amount of scaling she has. Therefore, she's getting higher cooldown on her shield to give opponents more room to punish her. Everyone should admire Draven. His passive adoration stacks. Now show an all chat so everybody can adore him. His ultimate whirling death now executes if the enemy's health is equal to or lower to Draven's Adoration stacks. Dr. Mundo has been countered too hard by anti heal, and to combat this, their adjustments to us are maximum dosage. His ultimate now grants bonus HP on cast and lower healing over time instead of healing for missing health. The immediate health gained ignores grievous wounds, but healing over time is still affected. Riot wants to juice up his jungle potential by increasing his Q infected bonzo. Maximum damage to monsters. This is too reliant on hitting his ultimate and skilled players are good at avoiding it. Riot is shifting his power from his R and turning him more into an early game threat with his W, Seastone Trident, having more on hit damage across the board. His passive, Nimble Fighter, also now grants better damage reduction versus basic attacks to help his survivability in lane. Gangplank has received changes last patch that made his parley count as a ranged attack rather than a melee attack. Therefore, he can't benefit from Grasp of the Undying and has a harder time getting through lane. To help him survive, he's getting his base health and health growth buffed a little bit this patch. Jace is getting his bonus movement speed duration on his passive Hextech Capacitor lowered to turn down his ability to outrun ganks and quickly travel them up. Jinx's mana cost on her Q, Switcheroo, was reduced to help her with more pushing power and a better early game. Kaisa is a typical hyper carry that we rarely see in the current fully focused meta. Riot is buffing her scaling capability by lowering the cooldown on her E. Charge. When Callista combos her ultimate, Fate's Call, with a melee support, it almost guarantees to kill their opponent in a CC chain. To allow for more counterplay, her ultimate's knockoff duration was lowered. The 11.16 changes left Karma feeling a little weak. She's getting buffs to her base armor and the base shield of her E. Inspire. To help her out a little bit. AD Kogma is in a good spot, but AP Cog needs a little love. To make him a viable pick mid, Riot is buffing his wave clear and poke 
by giving us E void us higher AP scalings. This sin was 100% pick or ban in LCK during patch 11.16. To make some room for other junglers to shine during worlds, he's getting his base attack nerfed. Lilia is a strong pick and top lane, and because of that it is hard to buff her in the jungle. This patch, her passive heals much more against large monsters, but her base health region and health growth has been hit hard. This way, her early sustain is very conditional on hitting jungle monsters, which makes her a risky pick in aggressive lanes, but doesn't hurt her in the jungle. Also, her Q's close. passive stack duration is up, and her E's Swirl seed. Cooldown is up as well. Misfortune's ultimate, bullet time, has now more waves of bullets. Morgana has been less popular in pro and average play, and is now getting more access to her E, Black Shield, by having its cooldown lowered by 2 seconds at all ranks. Riot is reintroducing Kiana to the jungle. By increasing her base attack speed and decreasing her health region, her Q, Elemental Wrath, now also does 25% bonus damage to monsters. Her E, Q, auto aim combo can now be dodged with a dash or teleport, or avoided by going out of her vision. To make it harder for Renekton to lock down targets in ganks and teamfights, He's getting a shorter stun on his empowered W, Ruthless Predator. But he's also getting a shorter animation lock on it. Riot is reverting the nerfs on Rumble's W, Scrap Shield, and putting it back on a 6 second cooldown at all ranks. To balance out this buff, they're nerfing his early game jungle clear, and his passive, Junkyard. Now grants less attack speed early, but scales with levels. Singed now applies grievous wounds to his enemies during his R Insanity Potion to kill him slowly, but surely. Soraka is getting a fat buff. Her ultimate, Wish, now cleanses grievous wounds before it applies its healing. Talia has been doing well in the jungle, but struggling in mint, so Red is changing the way her work ground mechanic works. The radius and duration of work ground has been decreased, and it now refunds 50% of her Q threat fully cooldown. Overall, work ground should feel less punishing and instead give Talia more options. Riot is looking to make Talon a viable jungle assassin by increasing his W break. Bonus damage versus monsters by 50%. At the same time, they're toning down Talon mid by lowering the damage on his Q. Noxian Diplomacy. Thresh has been dominating pro play despite multiple nerfs. So he gets another one. His movement speed was nerfed by 5, and his E, play, does less passive damage, but scales better with souls. Trundle ganks will be easier to deal with, because his E, pillar of ice, now slows less at all ranks. Twitch now gets more bonus AD from using his ultimate, spray. To help Orgot in ranged matchups, the mana cost and cooldown of his Q, Corrosive Charge, has been reduced. To make Varus less oppressive in lane, his base AD was lowered, and the bonus attack speed he gains from his passive, Living Vengeance, now scales with levels. Riot is improving Yon's skirmishing and team fighting ability by giving him a bigger shield per champion hit with his W, Spirit Glaive, after the first champion hit. 
Yumi has a short cooldown on her passive, pop and block, to encourage more aggressive play. Zed's passive, contempt for the weak, now deals 100% bonus damage against monsters to try and introduce him to the jungle assassin squad. Zoe is getting her E, sleepy trouble bubble, nerf reverted, and the cooldown is shorter at all rings again. And now let's take a look at the item changes this patch. Revenous and Titanic Hider's Cleave no longer activates on turrets, so you no longer get turret aggro because you accidentally cleave the champion below it when trying to split push. Umbra Glaive costs less, but also grants less lethality. And last, but not least, the runes. Or, I should rather say, the rune, which is the Predator rune. Red is increasing its ganking power by giving it a shorter ramp up time and more maximum movement speed for junglers that want to go vroom vroom. And <laughs> that's it for today's patch notes and I'll see you guys again next patch.